Theresa May's Brexit checkers plan could cost the Conservatives 25 seats if a general election was held tomorrow and pave the way for Jeremy Corbyn to enter Downing Street. Research by Matthew Goodwin, Professor of Politics at the University of Kent, suggests May's plan has not only failed to rally Conservative voters, but alienated many who backed the party in the last election. The Tories are down nearly four and a half points since July, while support for UKIP has jumped by a similar amount. The surge in pro-Leave Tory constituencies could siphon off Conservative votes, meaning more than two dozen Tory seats switch to Labour. Given May's slender coalition with the DUP, it would be enough to let in a Labour government. Earlier, I spoke to Margot Parker, UKIP MEP for the East Midlands, who thinks that voters have grown tired with Theresa May's promises. At this time, people have absolutely been sickened by the uh, giving away the family silver, uh, which this Prime Minister has most certainly done. So people gave her the benefit of the doubt. They thought, OK, all right, let her get on, let her do this uh, uh, Brexit, uh, and, and, and let's see what she delivers. But she's capitulated virtually at every turn. So people have become extremely tired of that. You know, they've lost patience with her government. But they've equally lost patience with Labour because they don't have any answers either for those people that voted leave. But did you say, I mean, you say the government's capitulated, mm. but last week we saw reports of a EU concession, you could say, on freedom of movement. And isn't that the key? Isn't that what was one of the main driving forces behind the referendum, that people were unhappy with freedom of movement? And here you have the EU saying, actually, maybe we'll put an end to it. Well, yes, we haven't seen anything in, in, in a sensible format from the... Nothing concrete, you know, yeah. Nothing but at all. Nothing at all. It, it may well say that, but, you know, uh, at the end of the day, people didn't want this free movement because we had huge numbers of unskilled labour, which, of course, took jobs which... You know, British people, to be fair, and certainly in my area, you know, the, the, many of the factories, uh, local people lost their jobs. Uh, and also it had a, a cascade effect down, whereas there wasn't enough housing. There wasn't enough uh, school places, local schools where people couldn't get their children into the schools because they were too full. And, of course, let's not forget that this also has a, a cascade effect down through the NHS. Uh, it, it all has a cost. People in this country actually got the bigger picture and they said, yes, that is a problem. We do want that controlled. Um, you know, we'd like our jobs, thank you very much. We'd like more social housing. You know, we want our country to be governed from Westminster. That's what they voted for. They haven't changed. But there have been recent polls. Mm -hmm. Big polls, credible polls, which say that actually for the first time since the referendum, the Remain side are starting to win the argument. 53% now saying that they would support Remain. That's the biggest gap since the referendum, I believe, in, in, in a poll. I mean, do you not worry that perhaps, as you call it, the scaremongering yes, project, fit, however, you, however you want to call it, I are you do. not worried that that's scaring people off supporting Brexit? I think there is an element, uh, of, you know, where they have leaned on people uh, and they're saying, oh, gosh, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. But... You do need to know what's going to happen. And really, what will happen is that you have to have faith in your country moving forward. You know, we're innovators. We've got so much going for us in this country. It's quite depressing that our own government and, and our own politicians, many of them, lack faith in what we can do. Uh, and I'm actually, I look very much to the Secretary of State who says, well, we can do these deals. Donald Trump, many don't like Donald Trump, but you know what? He's got his country looking a little bit more vibrant than many people would have given him credit for. So whether you like him or not, you know, there are things we can do. But actually, we can put this country on the map. We should have the courage to move forward and we should be able to do business with the rest of the world and still the European Union. And we hope they want to do that.